This evening we're going to be looking at some experiments due to, do, uh, sorry, to do with gases. And now I've set up uh, a beaker here with ice and two beakers with hot water that have just been boiled water here. And I've got a system of syringes that are connected together. Uh, this one's got some gas in it, some air in it. This one is fully depressed. Now I want you to watch what happens as I push the plunger in just at normal room temperature on this side. See what happens on the other side. And you can see that this one starts to push out and eventually it goes to a different volume. If I push back, it goes back to the same volume. And it's at a marking just at about on my, which I can read, you might not be able to read it over here, but it's about 15 or 16 uh, centimeters cubed. Okay, now what we want to ask is, what is going to happen if we change the temperature of the trapped gas. So I'm going to keep make sure that I keep my finger in about that position and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this whole system into the ice and I want you to think about what you think might happen to the volume of the trapped gas. Remember the energy of the uh, gas is going to decrease so the particles are going to be moving around more slowly and so one might expect that the volume would decrease. Let's see if we've got that happening. At the moment, it doesn't look too much has happened. We might need to let it, let it go in for a little longer. Let's just switch them between each other. I've still kept my finger in the same position. And hopefully you can see my thumb was at the bottom. It's about at the same. Doesn't look like too much has happened. So let's leave it in for a little longer. What we're going to do after we've done the ice is we're going to put it into the boiling water and see if there's a change in volume. Now, I wonder if you can predict what the change in volume would be. The molecules have less energy. They're moving around slower. They won't be able to exert as much pressure on the, the plunger. So we might expect that the volume would decrease. Let's see if it has actually happened. And from where I've had my finger, I hope you can see now over here that the black rim of that plunger has gone down. So the volume has actually decreased. Now I'm quickly going to empty the ice into a bin here and see if we can put in hot water into here. It's not boiling at the moment, but it was boiling just before we came onto air. And now watch and see if there's a change. Put it directly in and let's hope and see what will happen. We're looking at both of these plungers. Uh, and if we've increased the energy, if we've increased the kinetic energy of the molecules by increasing the temperature, those molecules are going to bounce around off the sides of the container a lot more. And so what we would expect is the volume is to increase. Now let's see if that's in fact happened. And hopefully you can see by a comparison of where it was, the plunger is much higher up than where it was before. So the black line has increased, the, the bottom of the plunger has been pushed out because the gas has expanded due to temperature increase. The gas that was trapped here was at a constant pressure. It was at atmospheric pressure inside here as well as outside. We weren't changing the pressure. We were only changing the temperature and the volume changed as a consequence. So I hope you've got that. It is uh, an equation that you should be very, very familiar with. There's a directly proportional relationship between the volume of a gas and its Kelvin temperature. Now, we'll certainly look at some equations around this sort of experiment, but at the moment we're going to an ad break, and Lise will be up next with a question, uh, maybe relating to gas laws, but if you've got any questions, please remember you can phone us on 08600 62847. I'm going to be back later in the show to illustrate the relationship between pressure and volume at constant temperature, which is Boyle's Law.